The XP-70 Valkyrie is one of the most innovative bombers ever made. This historic craft promised to fly deep into enemy territory to deliver a nuclear strike and exit the scene before interceptors could even get in position. Named after the Chooser of the Slain, a female warrior who guides the souls of the dead in Norse mythology, the Valkyrie project pushed the limits of aeronautical innovation by combining high-altitude flight with blistering speed and created an aircraft packed with secret weapon technology that we'll reveal in this video. Plans for a new bomber, Project MX2145. The XB-70 began as a different project. In January 1954, Boeing Aircraft Corporation collaborated with the RAND Corporation on Project MX2145 to develop the 110A weapon system. The project aimed to create an aircraft capable of delivering the new nuclear weapons that were being developed by the US at the time. They needed a plane that could fly from the US to the Soviet Union without stopping to refuel and fly at supersonic speeds so it could outrun the blast radius of a nuclear payload, a source of tough challenges for Boeing and RAND. To make the trip without refueling, the craft needed a huge fuel tank which would weigh down the plane and decrease fuel efficiency at a time when jet propulsion was already inefficient compared to newer models. The second biggest challenge was the weight of their own payload. The original nukes weighed several tons. They weren't the super precise doomsday missiles we have today. The engineers at Boeing and Rand came up with a solution in the form of the chemical afterburners that are now common in cutting-edge planes. But they did also consider making the aircraft nuclear-powered, which would give the craft unprecedented flight time plus the ability to fly at insane speeds, even with its incredible weight. The idea of a nuclear-powered plane had been around for over 10 years, with the US and the Soviet Union working on their own top-secret designs. By the mid-1940s, the US Army and the Air Force had formed a special group to bring nuclear-powered aircraft to life. It was dubbed the Nuclear Energy for the Propulsion of Aircraft, or NEPA, project. But three years before Boeing embarked on their MX2145 project, NEPA was cancelled and the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion, or ANP, program took over the experiment. On January 31, 1956, ANP created the world's first nuclear-powered jet engine by modifying a General Electric J-47 turbojet engine. US President John F. Kennedy would later end the ANP program early into Project MX2145, but that wasn't the end of the idea. Years later, the design of this new bomber was split into two designs that were pursued simultaneously, the Weapon System 125A, a nuclear-powered bomber, and the 110A, which used jet power. And it was this WS-110A that would later become the ambitious XB-70 Valkyrie. Obstacles and unlikely ideas To overcome the problems with flight range and weight, Boeing and Rand also considered using zip fuels that were enhanced with boron to improve efficiency by up to 40%. Boron is an element used in fiberglass and other industrial compounds, but it is rare. Boron accounts for only 0.001% of the Earth's crust, and cosmologists have shown it can only be produced by rare space events such as exploding stars, otherwise known as supernovae. In the early days of development on this next-gen bomber, it's easy to see why Boeing and Rand opted for the chemical afterburners instead of a nuclear fuel or boron zip fuel. A year later, in 1955, the US Air Force issued General Operation Requirement No. 38, which ordered a new bomber to be built by 1963. The US Air Force was interested in the WS-110A from Boeing and RAND because it promised to meet all of their specifications, except reconnaissance tools. They dropped the recon requirement after other projects developed better, more specialised recon aircraft. Once the US stepped in, the project was no longer in Boeing's hands. Contracts for the new bomber based on the WS-110A studies were auctioned. Of course, Boeing and Rand submitted a proposal, but North American Aviation also entered the fray. Although Boeing and Rand laid the groundwork for the Valkyrie, 
They now had to compete after the US awarded them both contracts for Phase 1 development. That's when the XB-70 Valkyrie began to take shape. Competition for the new bomber The initial designs from both companies were very similar. They both had the same shape, but Boeing opted for a single vertical stabiliser with a slightly wider placement of the engines, and both designs looked completely different from the final design. As part of the US operational requirement, zip fuel was now a must-have to boost flight range. These first designs seem to take cues straight from NASA's Project Gemini, which began in 1961. Many of NASA's rockets are designed to separate in different sections, and amazingly that's exactly what the early Valkyrie designs did. Both Boeing and North American Aviation designed larger fuel tanks near the wingtips which could hold enough fuel to get to the target. Then the tanks and the tips of the wings would be ejected as the remaining aircraft entered supersonic speeds en route to the target. The remaining craft would be equipped with trapezoidal wings which were the most efficient design of the era for low aerodynamic drag at high speeds. The design was innovative but with a takeoff weight of over 750,000 pounds, project leads were sceptical. Only a year later, the controversial US Air Force General Curtis LeMay rejected the designs, saying, this is not an airplane, it's a three-ship formation. Boeing and North American Aviation went back to the drawing board. But maybe the rejection was a blessing in disguise. While they were designing cutting-edge aircrafts, other organisations were studying new advancements in aeronautics. The gold standard trapezoidal wing had just been dethroned as the narrow delta wing became the new king. Boeing and NAA began designing new models based on this wing shape and plan form, and then they discovered the breakthrough they needed to finally overcome the ever-present fuel problem. The weight of the plane and payload along with the flight time meant that engineers needed more fuel, but more fuel means more weight, and all that weight meant a sacrifice in speed. Since supersonic speed was a requirement for the project, engineers had been using high-speed engines in all of their tests. They originally theorised that the plane would cruise at speeds lower than the supersonic threshold of Mach 1 or 768 miles per hour, before speeding up to drop bombs and then slow back down. They later realised that the proposed cruising speed burned twice as much fuel compared to the top speed because the engines were designed specifically for top speed. Since the soon-to-be Valkyrie had a top speed of four times its cruising speed, they discovered it was actually more fuel efficient in miles per unit to simply fly the craft at top speed for the entire flight. That is, if the plane could reach speeds of Mach 3. Adhering to the Delta Wing design, NAA and Boeing moved the extra fuel tanks closer to the body of the plane and increased their overall length. Both companies drew up plans for six engines. Boeing positioned theirs along the bottom of the craft on pylons with space between them like a souped-up passenger plane, or like the actual military model that flew during the 60s, the Convair B-58 Hustler. Meanwhile, the NAA placed all six of their engines in the back under the fuselage. This design difference would be important, but nowhere near the innovative leap needed for NAA to pull ahead of Boeing. But that's when NAA discovered a strange report conducted by two experts from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. The report was titled, Aircraft Configurations Developing High Lift Drag Ratios at High Supersonic Speeds. The authors of the report, Eggers and Syverton, had discovered compression lift, and NAA decided to create the world's first supersonic plane using this new discovery. Stars explode in giant balls of gas that span unfathomable distances, but supersonic flight creates a shock wave. When a plane goes supersonic, it creates shock waves, huge cones of high-pressure air that trail the craft. Shock waves are created from sharp points of the aircraft that cause immense changes in pressure and speed of the air around the plane. That's amazing, but it's nothing new. What turned the tide, though, was the discovery by Eggers and Syverton that wings could be placed with the shockwave in mind. If the wings were positioned perfectly, then they could capture the high-pressure shockwave and generate more lift, 
which would improve flight capabilities and fuel efficiency. So NAA went to work redesigning the intake to be triangular and much closer to the front of the craft, so that the wings were closer to the shock wave. They grouped the engines into two groups of three to accommodate the new intake and reworked the earliest designs that used the detachable wingtips. Instead of ejecting, the new wingtips would be mechanical and they would automatically lower at top speed to help catch the shock wave. They had essentially created a plane capable of surfing on the air, riding its own shock wave. By 1957, Boeing and NAA began competing with their new models and the NAA's futuristic design beat Boeing. Phase 1 development of the XB-70 Valkyrie began on January 24, 1958. It's officially called the B-70, following the naming conventions for bombers with the X standing for experimental craft. And the name Valkyrie came from a contest where US Air Force personnel could submit and vote on names. Valkyrie won, beating 19,999 other entries. Trouble for the Valkyrie History was already made, but the XB-70 ran into more problems. The development deadline was brought forwards by two years from 1963 to 1961, causing immense strain on the workers, but funding was also slashed. Then, advancements in anti-aircraft weaponry would become the next barrier for this one-of-a-kind craft. The B-70 would fly high enough and fast enough to avoid conventional ground weapons like anti-aircraft artillery, and fighter jets carrying old-fashioned missiles would stand little chance against the Valkyrie. But by the time the 60s rolled around, militaries around the world began developing guided missile systems. If fired from another supersonic craft, these new missiles would be almost impossible for the B-70 to avoid. Compared with the B-52, the Valkyrie actually ended up with a shorter range and smaller payload. It was designed for a battlefield before smart missiles, so it needed to be flown over areas without missile cover, which dramatically reduced its value. To make matters worse, the Zip Fuel program was also cancelled. The project underwent a number of changes over the next few years. It almost got cancelled, but Kennedy and his team thought they might be able to use the B-70 to take advantage of the perceived missile gap, the idea that the US had better nukes and more of them. However, this idea turned out to be false. The Kennedy administration switched gears and started operating on the belief that manned aircraft were becoming obsolete. By the time he was informed of the reality of missile effectiveness, the US had already spent $800 million on the Valkyrie project, accounting for inflation that's over $7 billion today. In January 1961, Kennedy cancelled work on the B-70 Valkyrie. That same year, the same general who canned the MX-2145 project from Boeing and RAND, Curtis Lee May, was promoted to Chief of Staff of the US Air Force and began promoting the XB-70, but his efforts couldn't revive the project. A new purpose and a final resting place. That wasn't the end of the XB-70 Valkyrie. Components from the B-70 were used in the F-108 supersonic interceptor fighter jet, but that project was also cancelled even before the Valkyrie project. From there, the XB-70 was commissioned for use in testing materials that would later be used in the B-1. Other tests were to be conducted to study other topics in aerodynamics, and these tests would only need a crew of two instead of four. To cut costs, only three XB-70 Valkyries were ordered, but the third was cancelled. Only two of these legendary aircrafts have ever been produced, and in September 1964, the Valkyrie had its first manned flight. Things were rocky at first with panels flying off the craft, but eventually it was able to achieve its design specs. It could fly into the stratosphere at up to 74,000 feet, flying at Mach 3 for 32 minutes. The B-70 Valkyrie reached a top speed of Mach 3.08, or over 2,000 miles per hour. However, testing was cut short when, on June 8, 1966, an XB-70 crashed into a NASA F-104N during a test, killing the F-104 pilot Joe Walker. <laughs> 
Major Carl Cross was on his first XB-70 flight as co-pilot and failed to eject, dying alongside Walker. The XB-70 pilot, Al White, successfully deployed the escape capsule, but he sustained major injuries. The last remaining XB-70 would go on to complete a few more tests. One test showed that sonic booms could damage houses. And so the XB-70 had its final supersonic flight on December 17, 1968, and it's now housed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. And that brings us to the end of the story of the fastest bomber ever. If ICBMs were delayed in development, how do you think this weapon would have performed? And what do you think of the crazy designs of the XB-70 Valkyrie? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and subscribe for notifications of more aviation videos.